Thank you all. Uh, I, in lieu of a speech, I've brought a, a thing to read to you, which is a uh, back and forth exchange between me and a young reader. But as I was listening to the introduction, I thought I would also introduce myself a bit uh, in a way that Roby didn't mention. Uh, and it, it may seem somewhat surprising to many people that I would be so often banned and censored because, look at me, I am a gray-haired, almost 80-year-old widow who lives alone with a cat named Lulu <laughs> in an old farmhouse in Maine. Uh, I grow flower gardens, uh, I bake cookies, and I knit. I could be a Norman Rockwell cover. <laughs> but this past winter, it was very tough in Maine, the weather. Most of you experienced that wherever you live. And it snowed and snowed and snowed, and it was very cold. And as I said, I live alone. And uh, I decided to spend some of those blizzardy days by watching something I had never watched, going all the way back to season one, episode one of The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched the first one, and then I watched the second one, and then I made myself a cup of tea and <laughs> stoked up the fireplace and watched the third and the fourth, and I binge watched The Wire many, many hours of the grandmother with her gray hair and her cup of tea and her knitting and the fireplace. And then after many hours of watching The Wire, the cat came in the room and rubbed against my leg. And I looked down at her and said, yo, bitch, you want your fucking dinner? <laughs> Okay. So this is what I brought to, to read to you. <laughs> this is my, my real speech. Uh, this is a back and forth exchange of emails between me and a child whose age is not given, but we're gonna guess that she's 10 or 11, and I'm so sorry that you can't see the spelling because it is remarkable. But at 6.47 on a Saturday morning, Megan wrote to me, and this is in its entirety, I do not think that this is a kid's book. It has stuff kids should not read about in it. And then there are many exclamation points. On the same day, a few hours later, I replied, I don't know what book of mine you are talking about, <laughs> Megan. I have written more than 40 books, but I think kids should know about everything and that reading books is a great way to learn. Several days passed and then she wrote me again, 7.16 a.m. Again, in its entirety, I am talking about Anastasia has the answers. It talks about bad things. I wrote back later that same day, I can't think of a single bad thing in that book. She replied, it talks about sex, so I think you might want to read your own book again. <laughs> I replied after some hours, because I had taken the time to read my own book again. <laughs> well, I replied, I took your advice, Bacon, and I looked all through Anastasia Has the Answers, and I didn't find a single thing in it that could be described as bad. It does use the word sex when Anastasia tries to convince her English teacher to use the book Gone with the Wind in class, and he says that he thinks it's inappropriate. But surely that isn't what you meant. And it uses the word sexy when Anastasia's friend paints her toenails and announces that she thinks they look sexy. Surely that isn't what you meant. 
So I have to disagree with you, I'm afraid. I don't think there's a single bad thing in the book, and I'm happy to have my own grandchildren read it. Megan wrote me again the next day. It also talks about a girl liking another girl. I mean, it happens in life, but you do not need to put that stuff in kids' books. <laughs> and I replied to her, <coughs> Megan, it talks about a girl worrying because she sort of has a crush on her female gym teacher. You're right that such things happen in real life. In the book, the girl talks to her mother about it and is reassured that she is perfectly normal. I think it is valuable for kids, for readers, to know that A, one can talk about such things with mom, and B, that such things are normal, such feelings are normal. Sometimes a book is a very comfortable way to think about such things, and sometimes it is good to read a book with your mom and talk about it. With love, Lois Lowry. Her final email came after that. Okay, I do not like this book, and you do not have to take my advice, but I absolutely hate this book. Oh, and P.S., never ever send me anything ever again, exclamation points, and not with love. <laughs> now, occasionally, when I've shown that bit of correspondence to an audience, people have said, that's terrible, she's so rude or someone made her write that, probably her mother. And both of those things are true. It's a little rude. And yes, it is highly unlikely that a child her age became so outraged and undertook to scold an author. It's likely that her mother or a teacher or a Sunday school teacher instigated that correspondence. But I don't care. I love that child. And she's the one I write for because she's the one who has read a book, who has reacted to a book, who's thinking about a book, and who is struggling to grow up and trying to figure out who she will become and how she will feel about things. And yes, she was rude to me, and of course I obeyed her orders and never wrote to her again. <laughs> but I'm gonna stay there in her consciousness, and as she matures, She'll think again about that passage in that book and about what I wrote to her, and those thoughts will become a part of who she will eventually become. Because children like her are affected, profoundly affected by what they read. <clears throat> and that's why I feel an enormous sense of responsibility each time I sit down and begin to write a new book. Each time I know I'm gonna touch the life of somebody young. So I have you guys to thank, and my publishers, and all of you out there uh, who allow me to do this, and to continue to do it, and to touch those lives of kids like Megan. This email correspondence was several years ago. She might be 15 now. Uh, I don't know how she feels. It doesn't matter. What, what matters is that she feels and that she thinks, and that she's affected by books. Uh, and some of them are books by me. Thank you all for this lovely <laughs> honor.